keep an eye on this guy, Tony Pearson. He really has something going in the sport of mixed pairs bodybuilding. After two victories with Shelly Gruel in 1982 and 1983, he's changed partners two times and still won. In 1984, victory with Carla Dunlap. And again in 1985 with Tina Plackinger, his third and most recent partner. He's definitely a man on the move, and this year, he went all the way to Holland to find Juliet Bergman, who he hopes will help him to his fifth consecutive mixed pairs title. Welcome to the Skyline Hotel in Toronto, Canada, and the IFBB Mixed Pairs World Bodybuilding Championship. Good afternoon, I'm Ahmad Rashad, and joining me is the acknowledged leader in women's bodybuilding, Rachel McClitch. Now, Rachel, in any sport, it's tough enough to make it to the top, but to stay there is even tougher. But today we have a guy that's won this competition with three different partners, and this is his fourth. Tony Pearson definitely knows how to tread on thin ice. Although he's no dummy, he is probably the most sought-after male partner in couples posing. I know what that's like. But <laughs> well, we have another guy who's won the competition before, but he hasn't competed lately, and that's Chris Dickerson. Chris Dickerson won the first couple competition with Stacey Bentley way back in 1980. He won it for a second time with Lynn Conkright, and he's been out of it for about four or five years. And whether he can make a comeback, we'll see. All right, now these two couples have not had a lot of time to practice, but there is a couple here that this is their forte. Kevin Lawrence and Diana Dennis, they do this all the time. Can they challenge? They can definitely challenge. They are probably the most perfected in their performance than any of the couples because they do it for a living they love it immensely and uh they're well renowned as the couple performers well the competition has begun and our first competitors are david hawk from pittsburgh who's the 1985 united states and world games champion and susie hasso from huntington beach california and she's the 1985 u.s national lightweight champion rachel how do they look to you their body types seem to match very, very well, as well as their posing style. But that's only one aspect of competition. Whether their body is peaked and prepared is a whole other story. Well, Rachel, just what are the judges looking for at this point? Muscularity for one. Posing presentation is very important. And how well they complement each other. This is couple presentation and two people performing as one is what this is all about. And of course, having a good dark tan never hurt anybody. Wait a minute, Rachel, what does having a tan have to do with having muscles? Well, not a whole lot, but when you have a good dark tan, it really makes the muscles that you do have look much more dense and hard, and it catches the light much better, and it's only an advantage to be totally prepared from the training aspect all the way to what color of posing trunks you use. Well, there you have it, Dave Hawk and Susie Hasso. Well, there's lots more to come. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Chard and Jose Guzman. They're unique. They're the smallest in the competition. He's five foot three and she's four eleven. We asked them if it's a drawback. Because we are small, that is different, and that might be to our advantage rather than our disadvantage. And we do match up really well. Our body types match up. And we'll be the, the first shortest couple <laughs> in the history of bodybuilding. Now, they may be small, but you know what they say about dynamite. It comes in small packages. <laughs> Another thing I like to say is the only time they may appear smaller is when they're standing next to a bigger couple. Standing by themselves, they're perfectly proportioned and very, very evenly matched. I think they look wonderful. Jose is 29 and he's from New York City and he's the Eastern United States Men's Amateur Champion. And Debbie's from Albany, New York, and she's the New York State Women's Amateur Champion. This is the first time they've worked together. Some of the world greatest athletes in bodybuilding have been rather short and I think they're up and coming and oh after watching that stand, I think they've got a long career ahead of them. Well how important is height actually? It's not important. I mean it is an advantage when you're standing like I said next to a larger competitor 
but proportion and what you do with your individual structure and frame is what bodybuilding is about creating an illusion with muscles and uh, just being the best you can be for your particular frame well jose came into this competition very confident and uh, he looks fit he's very well prepared i think they could use a little more oil but he's in excellent shape and so is she and they work very very well together debbie and jose trying to be the first shortest couple in the history of bodybuilding now weight rooms were never my favorite place but maybe that's because rachel wasn't there there are basically two types of exercises that everybody seems to be doing the type that tones your body and the more serious type that bodybuilders tend to do let me show you what i mean push-ups is a very basic exercise that just about everybody can do it's a good way to start toning up your upper body as well as your arms affects your chest and also your triceps. But if you want to direct your attention more on your triceps, then you do triceps extension on a chair. And if that doesn't seem to do the trick, go into the gym and zero in on the triceps by doing pulley press downs. And doing it with good form is of utmost importance. When you're in a gym working with weights, exercising the muscles according to the function is it performs is exactly what we're trying to do and doing it correctly will determine how much results you're going to get from your program incline press is what i'm doing here involves different muscle groups and if you want them all to be affected the same way you need to do it perfectly good old-fashioned sit-ups with bent knees will always affect the abdominal muscles in probably the best way possible you can use your hands to pull yourself up or cross them across your chest and twist your trunk to affect the serratus and the obliques of your waistline. For a more sculpted midsection look, you can go into the gym and do pulley pull-downs with weight to really sculpt the muscles in your abdominals. You can do the same thing with weight as you pull your knees up to your chest. To tone your thighs, one can do these leg kicks with a little kick in the back to affect the buttocks and the thighs. But this type of movement will only get you so far. Sooner or later, you'll probably feel the urge to go to the gym to get the results you've been hoping for. Tight, firm, sculpted muscles, and you'll only get them by working your muscles out with weight. Toe presses for the calves will give you the diamond-shaped calves that seems to be I hit at bodybuilding shows and as well as walking along the street. The buttock is an area that I think men as well as women should really be concerned about. Being the largest muscle group in the body, the gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus should be exercised according to the function it performs so that you can have a nice, tight, lifted buttock. You do that by, of course, adding weight to the movement of the muscle and by being consistent with your exercises. It's very important to commit yourself to an exercise program and stick with it. My advanced technique of doing leg curls involves a combination of working your buttocks with your hamstrings for the total harmony in your lower body instead of just working out your hamstrings by themselves. Still to come, a couple looking for their total harmony, a former winner, Chris Dickerson, and his partner, Donna Oliveira. And on stage now are Serge Moreau and Franz Bailer Jean. Now, Serge was a 1984 finalist in the Mr. Universe contest, and Franz was fourth in the 1984 Montreal Bodybuilding Championships, but they're new to the pairs. They are new, but judging from the popularity of the sport, this is a good indication that we'll be seeing a lot more newcomers in future events. Now, they don't speak English, but they seem to communicate very well with the crowd with just their good looks. Well, I think body language, as we see here, is a great way to communicate, especially to this, this crowd is very appreciative of muscles as they're showing us. Well, they lack a strong tan, but what about their posing routine? Well, their posing isn't, you know, terribly innovative, but they are sticking to the traditional presentation, which is okay, because as long as they're showing the major muscle groups, and as long as they complement each other as they pose as one entity, I think they should do okay, although once they start comparing, they might have a little trouble. 
having an attractive face such as she has, I think can only help her. I think she's really beautiful and they look lovely together. And as you can see, the hometown Canadian crowd agrees with you, Rachel. Now coming up is Chris Dickerson, who in 1980 won the first mixed pairs championship. We asked him how the sport has changed. The sport has just gone 360 degrees since that was 1980, by the way. And uh, I looked at those pictures and we did some double arm poses. We posed in unison, but now it's just much, much more fluid. Live, things people do, and I've, it's just grown tremendously. Now, Chris talked about the movement changes in mixed pairs, and he and his partner, Donna Oliveira, they start right off moving. They've chosen an energetic attitude to convey their philosophy for couples posing. There's one little flip spin, a traditional pose, so they're choosing a combination of traditional poses with something a little more enthusiastic. It might work for them, but we just don't know. Chris Dickerson is one of the greats in bodybuilding. He's from New York. He's won more individual professional competitions than any other bodybuilder in history. And he also won Mr. Olympia at the age of, I'll just say, past 40. <laughs> His partner, Don Oliveira, is no slouch now. She won the 1985 U.S. overall championship title as well as the 1985 middleweight championships at the 1985 World Games. The World Games were in London. I saw her compete there, and she looked fabulous. She's not as peaked during this competition. Chris is. He might pull her up uh, when it comes down to the judging, but uh, we'll just have to see. They look wonderful together. Their skin tones complement each other, and um, they really do a good job. Donna Oliveira and her partner Chris Dickerson. Now, Chris has won this competition two times with two different partners. And as you can see, he's back and he's prepared to challenge. That is some comeback. After 1980, you've made some remarkable changes or improvements, should I say. Well, thank you very much. I've got a wonderful partner. It's been a really a joint effort and terrific. She compliments me so well. She does her body and the way we work together. It's been terrific. The crowd loved you both. Could you tell? Yeah, we did. It was so much fun. I loved it. Yeah, it feels good. Well, we won't have to wait long because Tony and Juliet are up next. Now, one of the neat things about this competition is I get a chance to fulfill my bodybuilding fantasy. Now, everybody at home, don't laugh, everybody at home has at one point or another stood in front of a mirror and posed. But I'm going to find out the correct way to pose from Mr. America, two-time Mr. Universe, and Mr. World, Tony Pearson. Now, there's five mandatory poses. Mr. Tony and Paris shorts that look like that. <laughs> well, it wasn't only the shorts that were embarrassing, but one thing I do know, I was much taller than Tony. Now, Tony's won this competition four times with three different partners. This year, it's Juliet Bergman from Holland. Here's why. I like her style. She has this incredible symmetry and sex appeal. And we have the same body types. And I think we will complement each other very well. And what does Juliet think of him? Mm -hmm. It makes it easy. It makes posing easy. You have to feel it. If it, It's fun if you can get into what you're doing. And here they are getting into it. And you can tell that the crowd has been waiting for these two. Juliet and Tony have really created an anticipation in the audience because they've been waiting to see the defending champion with this new woman that, uh, that has a mystique created around her. She's got incredible symmetry and proportion. She's got a tiny waist, just like Tony. And these are just a few of the similarities that Tony mentioned in their physique, complementing each other. Their legs are structured a little bit different but nonetheless, they're thickly muscled for the frame that they both possess. Is it possible, Rachel, that one physique can dominate the other? Not in couples posing, unless, um, unless it's a grave mistake done on selection of the partners. I think at this level, they take time and um, they really think about who they're going to pose with and they take everything into consideration. Now, a personality can outshine on stage, but I think that's where posing, presentation, and practice comes in to, uh, to make sure you pose as one entity and not as individuals. You talk about personality. Tony 
has fantastic stage presence. I think his personality just comes alive when he gets on stage. It really does, and I think the audience can, can see that, and they're right up there with him. We have to remember that Juliet is not as experienced as Tony, and this is her very first public competition. I think she's going to gain more experience, and she's going to shine right along with Tony in the future. These athletes love to perform, and this crowd loves to watch them. While Tony and Juliet only had a short time to practice their routine, Kevin Lawrence and Diana Dennis practically do this for a living, and they're up next. Diana Dennis. Now, Diana also competes in singles, which can be a lonely ordeal. It's not the same when you're up there by yourself. You don't have somebody that can really relate to the feelings that you're having on stage. I feel alone often when I'm up there by myself. It's just such a nice feeling to have somebody to share that with. You know, for yourself, when you win something, uh, if you have team members or somebody else, they're sharing that feeling with you. They know exactly what it is. When you win by yourself, you're number one. It's not feeling, but there's nobody else who's sharing it. Kevin Lawrence and Diana Dennis are from Southern California, and they're three-time winners of the World Amateur Mixed Pairs Championship. Kevin and Diana epitomize couple performance at its best and most creative. I feel they are an innovative couple who are responsible for the lifted standards of couples' presentation. From a judge's standpoint, though, can it be too much dance, too much creativity? Depending on what judge you're talking about, yes, it could be defined as that. But movement through space, which is dance and movement and posing, um, is what creative art form is about. And I think they've really taken it to the nth degree in presenting their physique. And that's exactly what they're showing. They're showing the major muscles, their development, and the way they pose as a couple, which I think is to be admired, especially when you consider the high degree of difficulty that they've incorporated into their routine. In talking to these two athletes, they are really into the entertaining aspect of this mixed pairs. Well, they recognize the value of entertainment, and uh, this is a visual art form, and I think they understand what it's about. Beautiful. Bodybuilding, the training aspect, is what gets you to this level. What you do with this level is what separates the entertainers and the champions from the others. Very well done. Kevin Lawrence. Diana Dennis. What we've seen in the last two performances is a total contrast in style. So as the judges mark their ballots, we'll know in a moment who the top three finalists will be. Top three have been chosen. They are Donna Oliveira and Chris Dickerson, Juliet Bergman and Tony Pearson, Diana Dennis and Kevin Lawrence. Now the final round is the pose down. Ahmad, the pose down is where the couples try to upstage each other. Now this happens by trying to pose better than each other and to generally refresh the memories of the judges and the audience. They want to remind them about their routine, how well they work that out together, about the terrific condition of their physique and about how well they look as a couple together. Now, all of these factors are involved in selecting the winner for the couple's competition. Rachel, I really like this part of the competition, but tell me, can you make up ground here if you're a little bit behind in the pose down, can you make up ground? Not for the most part. The places are pretty well established. You mean, if you really get a great crowd reaction, the judges aren't swayed by it? Well, they probably are swayed to a point, but theoretically, they're able to give one point for this round, and I don't think one point will make that much difference unless it's very, very close. But I think once the judges make a decision, they're going to stick to it no matter what. Third place. And it's time for the award. With a check for $3,000, Chris Dickerson and Donna Oliveira. Chris Dickerson and Donna Oliveira accept their placing with the dignity that makes them champions. Here we go. They check for $5,000.
Devin Lawrence and Diana Dennis. The expert performers in second place. But for the fifth time, for the fourth partner, Tony Pearson is again the champion in the mixed pairs. With and Julia Julia Bergman. Bergman. And Julia Bergman, <laughs> this is her first time entering this competition, and she comes away a champion. They were terrific. The winners. Tony, you've done it again. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm really surprised. I thought it was really tough between Chris and Kevin and this time. Very tough. But uh, I think we kind of squeezed through. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel, Julia? Great, of course. Of course, that's great. So, Tony, what's next? Uh, we're mm. going to defend the title again. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're going to defend the title again? Yeah, sure. Julia, no. Or, or I must break the leg or something. But I have a sister, so she can replace me. Okay, well, well, I was just asking because you have a different woman every time. Yes, unfortunate. But, but they left but him. They let me go. <laughs> but I've been very fortunate this time. You did great. Congratulations to the best of you. Thank you very Thanks. much. So for Rachel McClish, I'm Ahmad Rashad from Toronto, Canada, saying so long. <laughs>